Welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins. I'm happy you're here to paint these lovely red and pink poppies and I hope you'll subscribe and come back for more videos. Today I'm going to talk about how you can prevent yourself from overworking your paintings with this painting tutorial and I'm calling these rejoicing poppies. Don't they look like they're rejoicing? So join me in this real-time painting tutorial where I will give you a strategy that might help you to keep from overworking your paintings. Hello artists and welcome to Monet Cafe. I thought I'd bring you along with me right now. I've got about less than an hour to paint before I have to be somewhere. And I thought, I just feel like I need to paint. I've been doing so many other things. So I grabbed me a piece of Sennelier Le Carte pastel card. I love this surface. It takes a little getting used to sometimes. It, it actually feels kind of like a soft, gritty pastel paper, but it holds a lot of layers. I think it lends itself towards an impressionistic painterly ending result. And so I'm just gonna paint and bring you guys along with me. So I may be fast and furious here, but it should be fun. Here is the large pad of the pastel card made by Sennelier. It's Le Carte Pastel Pastel Card. It's called Pastel Card because it's kind of thick. Okay, kind of like cardstock. And it comes in two sizes of pads. You can of course buy it in individual sheets as well. But I like that this pad comes with multiple colors. It's such a nice sanded surface. It's kind of soft. And I really love the impressionistic outcome that you get with this paper. Before getting started, I wanted to add in also that this paper is not water friendly. So just be sure to use pastels only on this surface. All right, here we go. I'm working from a reference image that is not my own and I'm going to be altering it a lot and just improvising, making it very impressionistic. So I won't share the image, but I think you should be able to, if you wanna follow along, I think you should be able to do that with this. It's a pretty simple um, layout actually. Let me get some charcoal, sketch in a little bit of this. It's going to be some poppies with a background of some just absolutely beautiful background of blue mountains. And um, we want to keep these very gestural. Don't even worry about um, drawing poppies that are um, perfect poppies, okay? We don't need that. This is just very gestural. I find the, the more loose and free you can get, the better. So I kind of want some energy of it coming up this way. And um, so you, you also too want to vary the size of your poppies. Some are gonna be a little smaller. You can actually even do them like little rectangles. Um, I do have a little one over here popping up. I'm going to make it um, kind of smaller in the background. A few are further away. One's back here just reaching up on its own, a little smaller. Then we're going to have various other poppies that are small in the background. And if they're much smaller, we don't need to draw them in. We can layer them on the top. So just getting in some little feeling of poppies, like a little... Um, kind of like a curve where the eye is going to come up like this. So that's really pretty much all I need. There is one big one down here. Like I said, I'm improvising this photo, um, so let's not worry about that. Now first, I'm going to work around these poppies and get a background in. There's this absolutely gorgeous kind of bluish purple mountain in the background. Uh, I'm going to get this in just to kind of show you where the... Um, oh, and I love this Le Carte paper. Show you where the mountain... Um, horizon line is back here. It's right about here. It's not, it's a little above halfway. I got to work fast and furious here. And I do, I think I want that one reaching up even higher, a little higher. I like it when they pop up um, over the rest of the poppies. Okay. So here's my mountain and the mountain's going to kind of come in like here, a little curve down. There's just a little bit of the sky showing back here. And then the mountain kind of comes up here. All right, so there's the mountain. We've got a little band of some trees going on. And all that is is just a little uh, really nice blue pastel. We've got a little border of trees going on back here. And I'm just grabbing pastels from my um, set. I always call it my intermediate set. It's where I throw a lot of my pastels in between paintings. But it ends up having such a nice arrangement of color. Okay, so I'm taking this dark green, and see, I can just grab from this. I usually have the right kind of value and color. If you don't have these colors, don't worry about it as long as you use the right value. This could be a dark purple. This could be a dark blue, but I'm going to make me like a little idea of a tree background here. You want to vary this too. I'm going to keep it low in here 
because I want some of these poppies to be peeking up and then I'm gonna make a, a bank of trees a little higher over here. It's usually best, I think I heard it from artist Karen Margulis, to have your mouth, she probably heard it from another artist. We all kind of copy each other with what we learn and that's, that's fine. Um, that we want our mountains and trees smiling rather than frowning. Notice even my mountain, even though it's in a section here, is going up. The trees are going up. So that's all I need right there, there we go. Um, and now for this beautiful feel that's bringing our eye back, I'm gonna go ahead and get in some dark underneath. Now this is a pretty dark, dark. This is that Terry Ludwig eggplant. I think it's too dark. I have a tendency sometimes to go too dark in my paintings. I'm gonna go with this beautiful purple. The, pa the paper is already um, a nice warm color. And so I'm just letting it be kind of a nice warm underpainting. I don't wanna cover everything up here. I like, um, I like a little bit of that warmth peeking through. This area in here has a little bit of taller grasses and darker in here, okay? And I like that. And we may have that kind of a little bit of this, like a trail, just kind of coming up and back. I think I'm gonna make those trees a little further away. That's the neat thing is once you start learning some of these principles, you can just improvise. You can take a photo and just make it your own. You can also take some of your older paintings and um, recreate them with um, with different uh, color palettes. All right, now, I, since I have such a short period of time, I'm just gonna paint now, you guys enjoy. I thought I'd give a little voiceover commentary here and give you some more tips maybe about recreating this if you choose to do so. I wanted to give some advice about this paper or pastel papers in general. There's a tendency sometimes to look at all that area that looks very unfinished such as I mean look at that purple that I added you know in the foreground kind of curving around notice how it looks kind of I don't know scribbly or doesn't have all of the surface covered and my advice is to resist the urge to cover that or complete that because your painting will feel a bit disjointed or perhaps overworked which is kind of part of this video um, if you focus too much too quickly on one area or getting it finished looking before the rest of the painting is we're working the painting overall um, and now I'm going to talk again a little bit more about the advantages once again to not overwork your painting by giving yourself a time um, limit in my case an hour I recommend and I, I actually love to do paintings that are more like 15 or 20 minutes and not being afraid to throw them away when you're done okay I'm gonna pause on that for a minute and talk to you a little bit about this that mountain in the background was so beautiful now it was like this gorgeous blue color but if I just chose I really like this blue that I have in my hand but if I had just picked up that blue and painted that without putting that purple down beneath it it would have been very flat and not very full of life there's just something about nature and god's design of color that there are usually multiple colors happening at the same time and that's one of the beauty uh, beautiful aspects i should say about pastel painting that i like to try to embrace and i'm learning to embrace is to let the colors play upon themselves if we over blend overwork the color is going to become muddy and you're not going to see them interacting with each other and layering and, and peeking through as this purple and blue are doing right now. Now I'm grabbing, this happens to be, I think it's a Sennelier pastel. I noticed in the mountain there was a little bit of a, um, a leaning towards a, a warm blue or a cool green. Okay, it's kind of like a turquoisey color. And so it was in the areas where the mountain was kind of highlighted. I noticed it was a little bit too light. So I'm, I'm darkening the mountain in areas right now with this purple. So it's still not a dark, dark value, but I added the purple first as a base. And typically with pastel, we work, we go dark to light. we lay our darker light value down first. That doesn't mean black. It just means if you're looking at something like these mountains, I want to get a base down like that purple before I put the lighter values on top and so all these colors that purple the blue that I used and that kind of teal um, almost aqua color that I added are all going to add 
to make this mountain magical and have the colors um, vibrating. That's the word I'm looking for. They actually do seem to vibrate when you don't overwork or overblend them. Now, the advantage of working quickly is we have more of a tendency to work the overall painting because we know we're on a time crunch rather than getting so fussy in one area so that's what restricting your time may do for you in helping you um, avoid that habit I have this habit so bad and I say this all the time in my videos I see this habit that I have so often because I have the advantage of making so many videos and watching myself paint when I'm done and I'm like man why did I keep working I should have paused, backed away, slowed down, or given myself a time limit as I've done here. So um, now when you're just beginning, I know that's easier said than done. You know, there's a lot of things you're still learning, so you may need to slow down in certain areas. But uh, once you feel like you're kind of getting somewhere, give yourself um, limited um, amounts of time to work. And I think you will find that uh, your work will be uh, more lively, fresh, energetic, colorful, less muddy. Look at all those things I've just rattled off. <laughs> but I, I, it's true. I know this about myself <laughs> and how I've worked. And okay, now I'm comparing some of the colors for the sky. The sky is going to be the lightest thing. I know that the sky upper heavens is usually darker and cooler. So I'm getting down this kind of uh, periwinkle blue. And I know that the beauty of pastels is we can layer. So I'm getting it in generally. There's not much of the sky showing here. And then I know that I'm going to work in what happens to the sky as it gets closer to the horizon. Well, typically in our Earth atmosphere, we've got the sun involved. The sun's going to warm things up. So usually lower towards the horizon, um, we've got a bit of the sun playing to make things warmer. Thus, typically... Cool, uh, colors, even blues, are going to get warmer. What happens with a blue when it gets warmer? It gets more teal or turquoise. I'm getting a little bit of a lighter value. It's still a little bit of that warm blue, a little teal. Um, typically, it's lighter down towards the horizon. Now, I'm using some of the other colors just to blend. And back again to somehow thinking, or sometimes thinking that, oh, my pastels aren't blending. I need to get out a blending tool, or I need to use my finger. Uh, right now what I'm doing, I'm letting the pastels blend themselves. I only used a blending tool one time in this painting and it was for the sky. I, I wanted it to be a little bit softer so that it receded in the distance. Um, I'm talking all the time about these strategies and these um, techniques and tactics that make things recede in the distance. That's one of the things we're trying to do as artists. We're trying to make a three-dimensional landscape look three-dimensional on a two-dimensional uh, two-dimensional surface. So we have to use these strategies and one of them is to decrease detail, which is why I um, blended the sky. It pushed it back, made it further away. You'll see me later just using a piece of pipe foam insulation to blend the sky. I don't know how long I'm going to talk here. I'm actually kind of tired. <laughs> I've had a busy day. I know a lot of you guys can relate. And sometimes art is our sanctuary. That's my my word now that I describe my little happy place in my studio. And my studio, you know, Monet Cafe is only a 10 by 13 room. Um, and I know uh, even before that, I worked at my kitchen table. I worked at my dining room table. I know that's what a lot of you guys are doing. But finding your little happy place in your sanctuary, often art is your escape. And it's your little place to relax. And um, really, when you're painting, it kind of takes your mind off of all of the other challenges that you might have in life. So whatever little space you have, make it your own. Um, I really, there's other videos I want to do sometimes, just giving tips on how to do that, um, just because I've had to work so economically um, my whole art career and practically and um, in small spaces. But you know what? I am coming to embrace the blessing of less is more it really is there's more freedom when you don't have too much stuff and even though we all want more pastels right we want like every pastel color in the rainbow <laughs> um we still can do a lot with very little we uh, that's why i do some limited palette 
um, videos where you don't have to have so much. I am kind of rambling, aren't I? <laughs> but um, I am going to add some music. I want you guys to enjoy this. And um, sometimes I like to add a lot of commentary, but sometimes I just like to let you guys enjoy the process. This is still real time. I am going to speed it up a little bit at the end. Right now I'm about 15 minutes into this. Um, and it did take me less than an hour. Praise the Lord. I made it to my appointment, which was with my kids. We went to Costco. Oh, our big outing. That was my big thing I had to do. And uh, it was very nice, though, because I haven't been out of my house much since I've been home caring for my mother-in-law with terminal cancer. So that's, like I said, some of the things that are giving our hearts and souls and minds some peace is painting. So again, I did accomplish my one hour painting and it was more fresh and um, less uh, muddied and overworked. So that's my goal for this particular tutorials and if you do recreate this painting often I forget to share kind of um, what the uh, the rules are I don't have many rules I really just ask that if you share your painting that you recreated from my painting that you just give me credit I often forget to say that I'm on Instagram and um, at Susan Jenkins artist and I'm very thankful a lot of you have been doing that. You recreate a painting. The great thing, it, it's not that I want the credit. I want to see what you've done. And I can see that when you mention me like that with the at symbol, Susan Jenkins artist, I can see what you've done. I am going to tell you here, I'm going to apologize. I didn't have my camera in the location I normally have it. Like I said, I was in a rush here. I had it kind of too much behind my head. So when I get to the right side of the painting, um, sometimes my big old head's in the way. Um, but I think you should still should be able to see it. And also, um, if you share it on Facebook or anywhere, you know, maybe just mention that you followed my video and, um, I don't have any other restrictions really other than that. I don't really do a lot of contests or things where my work is exclusive for me. I really just love to teach and share with you guys. So feel free to share and, um, and enjoy. So, all right, here's some music. Like I said a while ago, it's really coming. All right.
I'm close to wrapping it up at this point and I wanted to mention that these thinner pastels you see me using here for the wispy grasses are Prismacolor New Pastels, spelled N-U Pastels. They're harder, they're excellent for some linear strokes like this and um, I'm trying to keep it fresh and once again not overworked. Also too, before showing the final painting, I wanted to mention that my patrons from my Patreon page, it's only $5 a month to support this channel and get some extra instruction. My patrons will receive the color notes. I'm gonna show you all of the colors that I use for this particular painting. A little perk for being a patron of mine. All right, it's been about an hour and I am happy, I'm dirty, but I am happy with the loose results. And again, I love this LeCarte paper. Do you see how the it has the painterly impressionistic feel? So give yourself a time limit, stick to it. Don't be so serious about it. It's okay if you throw your work away because you're learning something with every painting. All right, I gotta go. Happy painting. <laughs>